my name's Mary. I'm Mary, the wife of Joseph. But before that, I marry the mother of Jesus, the Son of God. Let me just tell you my story. I was young. I was only 16 when an angel visited me. He was bright and beautiful and shiny, and I was so afraid. He said, Mary, don't be afraid. I calmed down immediately. And he said, Mary, you're highly favored among women, and you are going to conceive. Conceive, I thought, how can I conceive? I, I don't know a man. Sure, I, I was engaged to be married to Joseph at that time, but we had not come together to consummate the marriage. Don't be afraid, Mary, he said. This son that you will conceive and bear will be the son of God. The son of God? I'm going to have God's baby? Mary, this baby will be the savior of the world and he will save the people from their sins. Oh my, I'm going to have a baby and he'll be God's baby and he'll save the people. The angel left and I thought, oh goodness, I have to tell Joe. No, I can't tell Joseph. What would Joseph think? Oh no, what will I, I didn't tell Joseph. And after quite a, a long time, Joseph came to me and he said, Mary, what, what's bothering you? You seem so withdrawn lately. Has something happened? And I said, oh, Joseph, I just blurted it out. I said, Joseph, I'm going to have a baby. Oh, you should have seen the hurt look on his face. He turned and practically ran from me. Oh, God, I prayed. Now what will I do? Joseph thinks, oh, what does Joseph think? Oh, God, would you tell Joseph, like you told me, would you send an angel and tell Joseph that this is your child? And that's what he did. God heard my prayer, and he sent probably the same angel to me that appeared to Joseph. He told Joseph, it's okay, you can marry him. Go ahead and marry Mary. <laughs> She's all right. She's going to bear the Son of God. And so that's what happened. Joseph married me. He saved me from maybe being stoned. I could have been stoned to death for being without child and not being married. But Joseph is a good man. My husband is a good man. The Holy Spirit came over me and I conceived the Son of God before Joseph and I ever came together. He never touched me until after the baby was born. When I was great with child and it was almost time for him to be born, Caesar Augustus sent out a decree that everyone had to go to their home city to be taxed. Well, Joseph and I had to go to Bethlehem. I had to ride a donkey. <laughs> Do you know what it's like to ride a donkey when your baby is due? It was not a comfortable ride, I can tell you that. And then when we got to Bethlehem, oh, the place was so crowded with the other people who had come to pay their taxes. I thought, oh my, Joseph, it seemed he could never find a place for us to spend the night. All the rooms were filled. All the inns were filled. There was no place. And Joseph knocked on door after door trying to find us a place. Finally, when I thought I would have to, the baby in the streets, one innkeeper, in seeing my condition, said, look, out behind the, the inn there is a stable. Take your wife there. There's fresh hay. She can have the baby there. We were just in time. I barely made it when the baby was born. Oh, he was precious. Such a beautiful child. Later that night, shepherds came. They came in and they bowed down and they worshiped my baby, Jesus. The angel had said we must name him Jesus. The shepherds said that angels had appeared in the sky and had told them that if they would come to Bethlehem, 
they would see the child that had been born that would be the savior of the world. They said the angels told them that the baby would be wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And that's exactly what I had done with baby Jesus. Wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. After they had gone away and we had moved into a house to stay there for a while, well, actually, we went into Egypt because an angel told us that Herod wanted to kill Jesus. But after we were in a house, uh, kings came, wise men, men that studied the stars, and they said a star, a strange star, had appeared in the sky and led them to the spot where Jesus was. They came, they brought gifts, they brought gold and frankincense and myrrh, and, and they bowed down and worshipped Jesus, the Son of God. Well, after Herod died, who had given the decree to kill all the babies when he heard that a king had been born, think of it, my baby, a king, they didn't know he, later he would become the king of kings and the lord of lords. But the angel came and said we could go back home. We went back home and raised our child. He was a precious boy. Now there was that one incident when he didn't obey Joseph and I. Well, I don't know if he did it on purpose, but we had traveled to Jerusalem. It was his first trip. And on the way home, we had gone two or three days when I realized Jesus was not with me or Joseph. Joseph thought he was with me, and he was with neither one of us. So we went back and found Jesus. He was in the temple. He was asking and answering questions that amazed the priest and the Levites, the learned men who, who interpret the scripture. Joseph scolded him and said, Why have you caused this trouble to your mother. You know you've worried her. And Jesus said, but didn't you know I must be about my father's business? He knew. He knew that God was his father, not Joseph. Joseph was his earthly father, yes, and he was a good father. And God was selective in picking Joseph to be his father. He came from the line, the lineage that was pure. Jesus continued to grow, and when he was 33, he began his ministry. He did miracles. Oh, he turned water into wine. At the first, the first miracle that I actually saw him do was at a wedding in Cana. They ran out of wine. You know how embarrassing that is for the host. And when they told me, I said, well, why are you telling me? And they said, well, you know, tell Jesus. Well, I told Jesus. They've run out of wine. And he said, but it's not my time yet. But I told the men, you do whatever Jesus tells you to do. You know, that's good advice today. You do whatever Jesus tells you to do. You can't go wrong then. Well, Jesus told the men to get water fill up these jugs with water, and they did. And he said, now pass it out to the guest. And when they dipped and poured it into the guest glasses, it was wine. He had performed a miracle. And that was only the beginning. Oh, he, he did many miracles. He healed the sick. Every place he went, he healed. He raised the dead. I could tell you story after story after story of the miracles that my son did. My son, the son of God, God's son. After three years of performing these miracles and going from town to town, traveling the earth to tell people that the kingdom of God is at hand, and explaining the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. At the end, when he had only done good, evil men, who became jealous of him, said that's crucifying. 
Let's get rid of him. And what a heartbreak. The day they beat him and they crucified him, they hung him on a cross. His blood was spilled. His blood dropped out on the ground. And my mother's heart broke for him. My son, my baby, my child, the one I raised, the one I carried in my womb, the Son of God. I was so beside myself. But on the third day, there was a miracle. The Son of God, Jesus, rose from the dead. He came up out of that tomb, and he had conquered death and hell and the grave. And he did it for you. He did it for you. He was the goat, or the, the lamb rather, that takes away the sin of the world. He is the scapegoat because all of his sin, our sins, was put upon his head. Just like in the Old Testament when the scapegoat took the sins of the people on his head and carried them out into the wilderness, never to be remembered again against those people. Well, Jesus, my son, took your sins on himself. He bore them on that cross, and he conquered them so that you can overcome sin. That can be your turnaround this Tuesday. You can lay all of your sins at the feet of Jesus and know that they're already forgiven if you just cry out for help. Just cry out in repentance that you are sorry for your sins, that you are sorry for every bad thing and every wrong thing that you've said and done, and He will forgive you. And you can become a new creature in Christ Jesus, my Son, but also my Lord and my soon-coming King.